Hey everybody, welcome to Always Bored, Never Boring. Today I am painting Amelda Braskov from Warhammer Quest Cursed City. And as with all of my other Warhammer Quest Cursed City painting guides, we are going to be using Army Painter Speed Paints for this, and I have started by spray coating her with Army Painter Matte White. You will notice she is currently missing one leg, that is because I am painting her in two parts. And I'm doing that because it's going to make it easier to paint some of the areas that are a little bit difficult to reach with a brush when she is fully assembled. If you have already assembled her with glue, it's not the end of the world. But if you are going to paint her in sub-assemblies, one thing to be aware of is that Citadel push fit miniatures fit together very tightly. The pegs and the holes those pegs fit into are machined to incredible tolerance levels. For that reason, when I paint in sub-assemblies like this, I like to trim off at least the ends of the pegs and widen the holes slightly, and then when it's all painted, I will put it together with glue. But with that out of the way, we can start painting, and I'm going to use lead belcher first. I'm going to thin this down slightly, and I'm going to apply it to all of the metal areas of the miniature, and you may find that you need two coats to get good coverage. There is a lot of metal on this particular miniature, so this is the bit that's going to take the most time. And while it is a good idea to be a bit careful as you are applying the paint, if you have any overspill, it's easy enough to overpaint those mistakes with Army Paint and Matte White before you move on to the other colours. For my colour scheme for Amelda, I want her to look a bit like a Black Knight, so I'm going for dark colours and I'm using Lead Belcher rather than a brighter metal. You may want to go for something like a Shining Silver to really brighten it all up a bit more, but that's not the look I'm going for here. But as I said, this is probably going to be the part of the painting process that takes the most time. And as you are painting the miniature, if you're not quite sure which bits are supposed to be metal and which bits aren't, then it probably doesn't matter. If you can't tell, then neither can anybody else. But if you want to make sure you get it exactly right, you can refer to the images in the printed materials that come with the game to make sure you are getting it as accurate as possible. Oh, and one final thing, if you are painting in sub-assemblies, don't forget to paint the metal bits on the other part as well. Next I'm switching to Crusader Skin and I'm going to apply a very thin coat of this over Amelda's face. I want to make sure I've covered all of the skin areas. I don't mind if it goes a little bit over her hair. That's actually going to work in our favour because it's just going to help that hairline to blend in a bit more naturally when we paint the hair later on. Next up is Hardened Leather and we're going to apply this to the little pouch on her leg. And again, we're being careful here not to go over the white too much, but if we do, we can just use some Army Paint and Matte White to clean that up afterwards. But this is really the only bit of leather on the miniature that I'm going to be painting this way. But we are going to use hardened leather on a few other areas as well. I find that hardened leather applied over lead belcher gives a really nice coppery metallic colour, so I'm going to use that on the hilts of the swords, and I'm also going to use it on the various little icons on her armour. And then I'm switching to Zealot Yellow. Zealot Yellow is very bright, it's a really good bright yellow, but I don't want it to be that bright and unnatural for what I'm using here, so I'm going to mix in just a very small amount of hardened leather. And then I'm going to apply it to just the top part of the beak on the griffin on her shoulder. And then I'm also going to apply it to her hair. And of course this isn't really going to look like blonde hair, it's going to look a little bit too manga for that, a little bit too bright and unnatural. But it is going to be a sort of dirty yellow. I guess you could, if you were being generous, refer to it as strawberry blonde. Regardless, this is going to be quite a dark miniature when it's finished, so having quite bright hair on it, that does give it a pop of colour. So I'm okay with that. Finally, with the yellow, I need to make sure that I paint the eye on the griffin on the second part of the miniature, but also I want to paint the little amulet around her neck. I have already put lead belcher over that amulet, and then just applying a thin coat of the yellow over it should give it a yellow-tinged glimmer. She's coordinating with her hair colour, obviously. Next, we are switching to Gravelord Grey, and we're going to apply this over all of the metal areas that we haven't already painted with the hardened leather. So all of the armour plates will get this but we're also going to use it on her leggings just to give them a nice grey finish as well. I'm not going to put Gravelord Grey on the sword blade. I have something different in mind for that. But again, I'm just applying this carefully, trying not to get it over any of the white areas that still need to be painted. As always, you can clean that up with Army Painter Matte White, but it's just easier if you don't have to. 
and this grey will also go on the rock on the base, the scenic element there. Next I'm switching to Grim Black and this is going to go on her feet and her gloves. Now if you are concerned about the paint running off of her feet and going over the stone you have already painted, you can actually paint the stone after you have painted the feet. So you would do all of the armour, then you would do the feet and the gloves, then you would go back and do the rock afterwards. But I wasn't too worried about it, I was pretty sure that I wouldn't overspill and in fact I didn't. But yeah, if that's something that's going to be a concern for you, just change up the order in which you paint these elements. I'm always really impressed with the blacks and the greys in the Army Painter Speed Paints range. I think they always look really good. But with that done, we are switching to Pallid Bone, and this is just for the very tip of the griffin's beak. We're just going to apply a very thin coat of that. And again, Pallid Bone is another one of the really good speed paints, I think. And now we are switching to High Lord Blue, and I'm going to paint all of the cloth with this colour. And I do regret this a little bit. I wanted her to look a bit like a black knight, but I wanted something a little bit more colourful than just black cloth. In hindsight, I think I probably should have just done it white and then muddied it up with something like Agrax Earthshade, just to have something else that's a little bit brighter and a bit different from all of the other dark colours. Also, High Lord Blue is one of the colours that I'm not particularly impressed with. Along with the red and the purple, I don't think it goes on as well as some of the other colours. And quite often, it's a little bit patchy. I've definitely found, as I've been using the speed paints, some work much better than others. And this is one that I just can't seem to get really good results with, or at least results that I'm really happy with. But anyway, I'm going to apply this as carefully as I can using long sweeps of the brush to try and make sure it doesn't pull too much or create too much patchiness. I'm also going to really thin down some of the Highland Blue and apply it as a very, very fine wash over the blade of the sword. This will give it just a very slight blue tinge so we have a kind of blue steel look to it. And then we are switching to Holy White and we're going to apply this to the top two thirds of the Griffin's head. Holy White is basically a grey and if you apply it too thickly it will look grey. So this is one of those paints where really less is more. You want to put on a small amount and spread it out as thinly as possible. You really only want some of that greyness showing in the recesses. You want to pull it as thinly as possible across the rest of the miniature. So go sparingly with it and you will get something that does look like shaded white. And that's what we're doing here because I don't want this griffin's head to look grey, so I'm putting on small amounts at a time and then I'm really brushing it out thin. And we're going to cover, like I say, about two thirds of the head this way. Really just trying to give some nice definition to the details of the feathers without dramatically changing the whiteness. And then we're going to switch to dark wood and we're going to do the reverse here. We're going to start at the bottom of the feathers and we're going to work about two thirds of the way up. And again, we don't want this to be really dark coloration. So we're going to put on small amounts and then pull it thinly across the miniature. And what should happen is at the bottom of the feathers, you will have the dark wood coloration. And then as you move up through the feathers, it will blend into that holy white and you will get a nice transition between the two colors. And this is something you can play around with constantly adding a little bit more water, pulling the paint around a bit more until it blends just how you want it to. But really this is the final stage of the speed painting for this miniature. We are basically done at this point. So this is what we had originally and this is what we have now. At this stage all I've done with the base is put some texture paint on and put one coat of black paint on the rim. There is more to be done there, I need to do some highlighting, I need to do a second coat of the black paint, then the miniature will need to be varnished and then I will need to put some other details on like scatter grass, things like that. But basically we are done and I'm pretty happy with this. Like I said I'm not that happy with the blue on the cloth, I really do wish I had gone for a different colour there. But other than that, I'm pretty happy. And it worked well painting this miniature in the two sub-assemblies. I actually attached them, as you will have noticed in the video, at the point when I was painting the griffin. So really just the very final stage of the painting process is when I attached the two parts together. And really that's a good time to do it because that griffin's head is in two parts and by attaching it together, you will just make sure you get a more natural transition through the feathers. But anyway, that is it from me for now. Thank you so much for watching. If you've enjoyed the video, please consider pressing the like button. If you've really enjoyed the video, please consider subscribing if you don't already do so. And hopefully, I will see you all again very soon. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye-bye.